Good morning. Welcome to today's class. I am Dr. P. V. Rekha Devi from the Department of Biotechnology, Andhra Lalo College, Vijayawada. The topic for today's discussion is cell cycle and regulation. The contents of the topic include a brief history of cell cycle and the definition of cell cycle followed by the introduction and the significance of cell cycle and the various phases that comprise in the cell cycle, the significance of the various phases followed by mitosis and cytokinesis. At the conclusion or the end of the topic, we will look upon the cell cycle regulation and its checkpoints. Prevost and Dumas were the scientists who in the early 18th century found out first time that the cell undergoes a series of events when they were studying the cleavage of zygote in frog. Later in the early 19th century, Walter Fleming discovered the series of events in the cell cycle. The cell is the basic unit of life. Every complex eukaryotic organism consists of trillions of cells and all these cells have specialized function which means that the different cells in our body perform different functions and so the various cells are structurally and functionally different which means that the cells vary in size, shape, content and the strength depending upon the function that they perform in our body. When we say the different functions in our body we mean the replicative ability of the cells and the process by which the cell undergoes death. The replicative ability or the replicative potential of the cell means the strength of the cell by which the cell undergoes various stages of for its growth and development. When the cell expires or loses out its potential, it subjects itself to a programmed series of events which we call as apoptosis. So, by definition, cell cycle is nothing but a series of events that take place in a cell resulting in the duplication of the DNA, the increase in the volume of its cytoplasmic contents and the organelles so that when it divides by cytokinesis, it gives out sufficient volume of DNA, the genetic material and the cytoplasmic contents to its daughter cells. It is a process in which a single parent cell gives rise to a population of cells that grow and develop. The cell passes to various stages to produce and divide, divide and produce the various daughter cells. So, cell cycle can be defined as an ordered series of events that take place in a cell leading to its maturity and subsequent division. This is a diagrammatic representation of cell cycle. So, the cell cycle varies in different cells. The frequency with which the cell divides depends upon its type and its developmental stage. For example, the cells in the embryonic stage divide very rapidly and the, there are cells which actively divide throughout. Example, the intestinal epithelial cells, the bone marrow stem cells, but there are some cells which divide very infrequently. So, such cells can be the examples of the liver cells. There are certain cells which do not divide at all. Such examples are the neurons which are the terminally differentiated adult cells. This picture depicts the various phases of the cell cycle. The cell cycle on the whole can be divided into two major phases, the interphase and the mitotic phase. The interphase is the phase in which the cell grows, increases in its nuclear DNA content and also the cytoplasmic contents. The interphase is the phase where the cell increases its in size and makes a sufficient volume of genetic material and cytoplasmic contents to be able to be equally divided to the two daughter cells that form at the end of cytokinesis. The interphase is followed by the mitotic phase which is the actual phase where the parent cell divides and gives rise to two daughter cells which are genetically identical. So, the interphase is further divided into various phases. The interphase can be defined as a resting phase in which the cell prepares itself for its growth 
and subsequent division followed a uh, subsequent division by replication of the DNA and its cytoplasmic contents. When we divide the entire cell cycle into a timeline frame, 95 percent of the time the cell spends in about interface. Followed uh, the interface includes the G1 phase, the S phase and the G2 phase. The G0 phase is the initial phase when the cell actually enters into the cell cycle. It can be called or defined as an inactive or quiescent stage. The cells which have completed one round of cell cycle are considered to be staying in the G0 phase or the cells which are about to enter into the G1 phase are uh, the G0 is the preceding phase for the cells which are going to enter into the G1 phase. So, the cells which are in this stage are temporarily in this particular stage until an external signal triggers them to make them enter into the G1 phase. The G1 phase can be called as the first gap phase or the first phase of growth. This is the first stage of interphase in which the cells are biochemically active. Biochemically active means the cells have enough accumulation of the chromosomal DNA, increase in the volume of the associated proteins and also the energy reserves which help them to complete the replicating process so that the chromosomes divide and replicate to be sufficient enough to be distributed to the two daughter nuclei. The DNA in this stage is assessed for any damage and any such damage is repaired as the cell increases in size followed by the S phase. The S phase can also be called as the synthetic phase or the phase of DNA synthesis. The nuclear DNA remains in a semi-condensed chromatin form in the synthetic phase. The resultant DNA replication results in the formation of the identical pairs of DNA molecules which are firmly attached to the centromeric region. The two centromeres of the homologous chromosomes give rise to the mitotic spindle in the S phase. Followed by the S phase is the G2 phase which can also be considered as the second growth phase or the second gap phase. The cell replenishes its energy stores since the cell might have incurred so much of energy in the first two phases that is the G1 and the S phase for performing the activities of increase in cell size, increase in its cytoplasmic contents and the genetic material. Here the increase in the number of proteins that are synthesized occurs to enable any kinds of chromosomal modifications. The cell organelles are also duplicated, the cytoskeleton is dismantled, the size of the cell increases and any DNA that has been replicated if found to be damaged is repaired in the G2 phase. After the completion of the phases of the interphase that is the cells that enter from the G0 phase the inactive quiescent stage which enter into the G1 phase which is the first phase of growth or the first growth phase then entering into the synthetic phase where the genetic materials or the contents are increased or replicated in volume and number enters into the G2 phase followed by the mitotic phase. Mitosis in itself is a programmed series of events which comprises of the four major phases that is the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase and the telophase. The cell after completion of mitosis and uh, perform cytokinesis for dividing into two daughter cells. But before the two daughter cells are divided and the cytoplasmic contents and the genetic material is distributed equally into the two daughter cells, there are certain checkpoints that regulate the cell cycle, which means that certain kinds of regulatory processes should occur when the cell is proceeding from G1 to S phase, S to G2 phase or G2 to M phase. This is because whatever is the genetic material which has been replicated if found to be damaged will be passed on to the two daughter cells that are formed. Any malfunctioning or damaged genetic material if passed on to the daughter cells will result in malfunctioning daughter cells or damaged cells or cells which are dysfunctional. So, 
the regulatory checkpoints are required to make sure that the two daughter cells that are formed post cytokinesis are two healthy daughter cells which are genetically identical of the parent cell. There is always ample chance that the DNA might be damaged or certain proteins might be non-functional and this might be passed on to the daughter cells. To put a checkpoint, the cell cycle regulatory mechanism operates. Now we can consider this pathway. During the course of the cell's journey, due, uh, due, uh, uh, along the various phases of cell cycle, there is ample chance that some mistakes in the replicative mechanism might occur. And the checkpoints are necessary to put a check to these mistakes or damaged DNA that is formed. So, the first checkpoint is the G1S checkpoint, which is called as the restriction checkpoint, which checks for the damage to the genomic DNA. Here, if the DNA is found to be damaged, the checkpoint checks and controls for the cell to proceed into the next phase that is the S phase. Here the cell becomes quiescent or inactive or pauses for a while till these deficiencies are repaired. The deficiency may be in the form of a damaged DNA. If this is repaired, the cell further proceeds into the next phase which is the synthetic phase. The next checkpoint is when the cell enters from G2 to M. So, this checkpoint prevents the cell from entering into the mitotic phase if there are any deficiencies found at the G2 point. Here it ensures that the chromosomes are replicated properly and the replicated DNA is not damaged. If any replicated di damaged DNA is found, it is subject to repair. The cell will repair any deficiencies. The cell will either undergo into a quiescent stage or the senescence or the cell proceeds further after repair. The M checkpoint determines that all the sister chromatids are correctly attached to the spindle microtubules. The cells that cannot proceed past this checkpoint will be eliminated by a programmed cell death process called as the apoptosis. To conclude, the cell cycle is a series of events that occur for the cell to grow, multiply and develop its population. The significance of the cell cycle is that the parent cell divides and gives rise to two daughter cells which are genetically identical and the various phases make sure the cell increases in its cytoplasmic content and the genetic material to the extent that sufficient amounts to be possible to be imparted to the two daughter nuclei or the two daughter cells that are formed are formed during the various phases of the cell cycle. The checkpoints of the cell cycle make sure that any damage or deficiency in the cytoplasmic or the genetic material that is formed during the various phases are corrected even before the cytokinesis occurs and makes sure that no defective DNA is imparted or transmitted uh, transferred to the two daughter cells. This is very important because if the checkpoints are not regulated, it would result in uncontrolled cell division which is nothing but cancer. So, understanding the various process of cell cycle will help us in determining the diagnostic procedures for various cancers because the cancer pathogenesis is known to arise from the defective cell cycle regulatory checkpoints. So, at the end of the topic, the student should be able to analyze and understand the significance of the cell cycle and the importance of the cell cycle and the significance of each phase of the cell cycle, how the cell undergoes various phases of growth and development to be undergoing the process of cytokinesis to divide into two daughter cells. These are the various references and the video links for the videos for the specially challenged students with voice over videos. Thank you.